My name is Brian Goldstein and I'm a faculty member in the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders at Temple University. And today on this Adelante Forum I'm going to be talking about phonological assessment for bilingual children. First I'd like to thank Bilingual Therapies and Nate Cornish for giving me the opportunity to participate in this new and exciting forum on the Bilingual Therapies website. My focus in this presentation is conducting a reliable and valid assessment for bilingual children. The imp information presented here is generalizable to all bilingual children, although I will emphasize and draw examples from Spanish-English bilingual children given my research and clinical experience and the fact that about 80% of English language learners in U.S. schools speak Spanish as their language in addition to English. To reliably and validly assess bilingual children, it's necessary to gather background information about the child and his or her family to gauge the child's relative input and output in each language. You may need the services of a support personnel in order to do this, perhaps a cultural broker, interpreter, and or translator. Importantly, you need to know the phonological structure of the non-English language, including consonants, vowels, and syllable structure. Gather information on the language history of the child, that is their age of acquisition of each of the two languages. Obtain information on language use, that is, how often and with whom did they use each language, and proficiency, how well they use each of the two languages. In completing a case history, include questions that are specific to phonology, such as do family members and or others outside the family understand the child all, some, or none of the time? That is, does the child sound like others of the same age? gather information on the intelligibility of the child for both family members and those outside of the family. Ask about the dialect that the child speaks, and I'll come back to this topic a little bit later. Ask what consonants the child produces. The family may not be able to give you specifics in terms of the sounds the child produces, but it may be possible to ask is the child producing sounds in the front of the mouth or in the back of the mouth, a mouth again, to gauge general information about development. Ask if the child makes errors on vowels, knowing that children who make vowel errors are often have a more severe phonological disorder than those who do not make vowel errors. Although I'm not going to discuss them here, remember to complete the following assessments. A hearing screening, oral peripheral exam, voice and fluency skills, and also language skills. In terms of phonology then, it's important to attempt to assess the phonological skills in both languages. That is, examine phonological skills in language A and examine phonological skills in language B. It's important to elicit both a single word and connected speech sample. Eliciting a single word sample will ensure that all aspects of the phonological system are attempted. For example, in a connected speech sample, children might not attempt later developing sounds like flap and trill if not prompted through single words. However, it is of course important to elicit a connected speech sample as well, an issue I'll discuss momentarily. In English, there are a number of formal measures that can be used to assess single word production. In languages other than English, it may be more difficult. In Spanish, for example, there are a number of, of choices. The assessment of phonological process is Spanish, the contextual probe of articulation competence Spanish, and the Spanish articulation measures. Although these tests are not normed, you can use the published tests informally and then compare them to those normative data results in the literature. Along with a single word sample, it's important to elicit a connected speech sample to judge speech in a more naturalistic context and to determine intelligibility. So you can use percentage estimate of intelligibility such as speech was intelligible 75% of the time in known contexts and 50% of the time in unknown contexts. If a child subsequently needs treatment, you can use ongoing information about intelligibility to gauge transfer and generalization. Use information from the single word and connected speech samples to perform two types of analyses, an independent analysis and a relational analysis. An independent analysis is one in which you do not compare the child's productions to the adult target. So you might gather information on the consonants in initial and final position that the child produces, and I would suggest organize, organizing them by manner class. 
gather information on initial and final clusters, realizing that those are going to be different depending on the languages that you are assessing. Gather information on vowels, and finally on syllable types such as CV, CVC, CCVC. Again, realizing that syllable types will be different in English than in Spanish. Once the independent analysis is done, complete a relational analysis. A relational analysis is one in which you do compare the child's productions to the adult target. This analysis is completed for both consonants and vowels. So you would look at error types such as substitutions, omissions, distortions, and additions. Look at phonological patterns or processes. Gauge stimulability, that is the ability of the child to produce a sound and error after your model. And also look at any vowel errors or error patterns that the child is exhibiting. Once the samples are elicited, it's necessary to describe the child's phonological skills in each language. And I would suggest a four-way distinction. First, gather information on common patterns. Those are ones that are exhibited commonly in typically developing children speaking a variety of languages. And they might include syllable patterns or syllabic patterns such as cluster reduction, final consonant deletion, substitution patterns like stopping and fronting, and assimilation patterns. Uncommon pattern ones that are not exhibited in typically developing children. However, they are often exhibited in children with phonological disorders. Those include patterns such as initial consonant deletion, like opa for sopa, and backing, placo for plato. Three, determine cross-linguistic effects, that is the substitution of a sound or pattern not in one of the child's languages. So you might get Spanish-influenced English, in which Spanish is used during an English production, so fitch for fitch, fitch for fish, or English-influenced Spanish, the use of English during a Spanish production. So for example, perro for perro, or dog. Remember to take dialect into account. So for example, the trill in Spanish can be produced as ra, an alveolar trill, ra, a uvular trill, or ha, a voiceless velar fricative. Because Spanish has a large variety of dialects associated with it, it's necessary to take these into account, not score them as errors, and thus not treat them um, if the child subsequently needs intervention. In summary, to provide reliable and valid assessment to bilingual children, elicit single word and connected speech samples in both languages. Using those samples, complete independent and relational analyses. During the assessment, remember that phonological development is not parallel across the bilingual child's two languages. Thus, the order of acquisition and phonological patterns will differ across the languages. So, just because the child produces L in Spanish does not mean that she will do so in English. Also remember that use and proficiency are not static because input and output vary over time. Complete a case history gauging these two aspects every time you complete an assessment. Finally, as I noted earlier, it's important to complete a broad and deep phonological assessment. One reason to do so is to link that assessment with intervention. In an upcoming Adelanto Forum, Dr. Leah Fabiano will present on intervention for bilingual children with phonological disorders. In the meantime, I look forward to your questions and comments about the assessment of bilingual children. Mil gracias. Thank you.